Hey guys, back with my predictions for UFC 185, Pettis versus Dos Anjos. I'm a little late with this video. I like to try to get them out a little bit earlier, but I've been busy. I hope you all still have a chance to watch this and digest it before you make your picks and, and make your bets. But let's get right to it. I'm really excited for this card. This is what a really good, strong UFC pay-per-view should be the last pay-per-view was terrible. The Rousey versus Ngano card, um, really a, a main card, not worthy of being on pay-per-view ever. And you know that card should have been canceled. But here we have two title fights. Um, the undercard is really good too. The Roy Nelson Alistair Overeem fight that didn't even make it on the countdown, but. Um, that everyone's really sleeping on that one, but I'm really excited to see that fight. The undercard, uh, kind of weak, but I still think it's better than the typical fight night prelim cards uh, we get these days in a few matchups there that I'm really looking forward to. But a uh, really great card, really looking forward to it, and let's get right to it. Starting off with the UFC Fight Pass preliminary card at Women's Bantamweight, Larissa Pacheco versus Jermaine De random me um, Pacheco got submitted really quickly in her fight against Jessica Andrade that was her debut um, I didn't get obviously a good sense of her abilities in that fight I mean it was just really quick um, there's a lot of hype around her though I've been hearing that she's a really uh, big prospect Jermaine de random me though uh, had two fights in the UFC Won her debut against Julie Kedzie where I thought she looked really mediocre and I actually thought Kedzie won that fight and then against Amanda Nunes just got ran over uh, really early on. Uh, got finished in the first round there. Nunes got on top and pounded her out. So even though I don't uh, really have a sense of Pacheco's uh, game at all, I, I think I'm going to go with her here just because random me, I think, has looked pretty mediocre. Hasn't done anything in either of her two fights to stand out. Um, you know, getting ran over one time and the other fight looking really mediocre. So I think I'm going to go with Pacheco here. But, you know, getting finished by Andrade real early and, um, you know, Andrade just coming off of a first round loss herself, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be too uh i wouldn't expect too much of uh pacheco's game at the ufc level but um just with the hype i'm hearing about her i think i'll take her over randomly and then the next fight at lightweight jake Lindsay versus joseph duffy joseph duffy uh has a win over conor mcgregor and Jake Lindsay, I think, has looked really incompetent in both of his uh, UFC fights in his debut against John Tuck. Got finished, and John Tuck isn't a bad fighter, but I think he's kind of relegated to the the lower ranks, the level he's at right now. I don't see him really moving through the ranks, but got finished pretty handily in that fight. Um, and then his next fight against uh, Aubin Mercier, from uh, finalist from Tough Nations, um, just couldn't deal with the grappling at all, couldn't deal with the takedowns, and uh, got submitted with an inverted um, an inverted triangle and uh, really wasn't competitive at all. So Jake Lindsay to me, just seems like a sub-UFC level talent, doesn't belong in the UFC. Um, I expect him to lose here, but I've never seen Duffy fight. I uh, don't know anything about him, so I won't make a pick here, but uh, I do expect Lindsay to lose. And last fight on the fight pass prelim card at flyweight, Sergio Pettis versus Ryan Benoit. They seem to really be uh, feeding Pettis guys that he should easily beat. Um, Pettis, though, has proven that he's really not the killer. He's He doesn't hunt for the pin it, finish like his brother does. Um, very methodical, actually. Um, and his last fight against Matt Hobar got dropped right at the opening bell, um, was able to recover and then did his usual methodical thing, ended up winning the decision, um, had the loss to uh, Alex Caceres, um, a couple fights before that, 
uh, was doing really well in that fight, though. I think, you know, he shows flashes of, uh, you know, really high-level striking, um, but is just not very aggressive and doesn't go for that finish like, uh, like you know, we want to see him do. Brian Benoit in his debut against Josh Sampo. I don't remember uh, a whole lot about that fight, but I remember thinking that he didn't look that bad. Um, I think he got on top a few times but was having trouble with Sampo's guard and eventually got uh, submitted with the rear naked choke. But I'm going to go with Pettis here until he takes a big step up in competition. I think he's still good enough um, and too good of a striker to, to lose to these lower level guys. So uh, I'm going to take him to get the win here. And next up on the FX preliminary card, uh, not Fox Sports 1, at heavyweight Jared Rocholt versus Josh Copeland. Um, Josh Copeland, coming off of his debut, lost to Ruslan Magomedov. Showed a good chin in that fight, but really got dominated. Ate a bunch of big shots and um, really couldn't do much else. Jared Rocholt... Um, I was really impressed with his win over Soa Pulele. I thought he showed a lot of improvement in that fight. Actually hurt Pulele on the feet a couple of times and just had the better cardio. Outworked him and uh, really put that wrestling game on him. But in that last fight, um, I think his chin was really exposed and uh, we kind of saw his ceiling. Was doing well against Olenek early. Uh, doing well in the clinch with the dirty boxing. But all it took was... Uh, a well-landed shot by Olenek to put his lights out completely. Um, and we also saw that in his debut fight against Walt Harris. Um, was dropped early on, almost finished, but was able to recover and get the win. Um, and also had a win over Daniel Milanchek, where it was just a pretty boring uh, you know, wrestling uh, clinic. And that's uh, Rocholt's game. Uh, has a really good uh, wrestling game. Looks like um, he looks like a, a collegiate wrestler out there, uh, just applying it to MMA and uh, does it really well. Um, but other than that, doesn't have a whole lot um, on the feet. Although, like I said, in the Pulele fight, I think he showed some uh, decent striking. Um, but I think he is uh, vulnerable to just about anybody if, uh, if they connect. But I will take Rosholt here. I think he's a better wrestler. Um, you know, Copeland just got dominated by a, a pretty capable striker in his last fight. Rocholt won't have that level of striking, but uh, I'll just uh, expect Rocholt to be able to impose that wrestling game on him. Next up, a really great matchup and one that um, I think I have uh, some insight here to offer. A lightweight Darren Crookshank versus Benil Dariush. Uh, great matchup, and I think I feel like everyone here is going to take uh, Crookshank and... I don't think that's wise. I would uh, really uh, suggest you to to reconsider. Um, I'm taking Darius in this fight. Crookshank, uh, you know, has all those highlight reel finishes. The only guy um, he was able to finish though that mattered was Eric Koch. You know, before that had a bunch of uh, or a couple of really great finishes, but over really low level guys that are long gone from the UFC. Uh, tough veteran Mike Rio and Henry Martinez uh, back in 2012 had really um, impressive finishes over those guys. In between there, had losses to MacDessie, Martins, a decision win over Eves Edwards. Um, and then that Coke fight, I thought he really turned a corner in his next fight uh, against Masvidal. Actually picked him to win that fight. Was doing great in the first round, dropped Masvidal, but then Masvidal just put that uh, well-rounded game on him with the wrestling and grappling, and Crookshank just couldn't handle it. Came back with a win over Anthony Njikawani. After that, where he actually used some of his own wrestling um, to get the win. A nice decision, one where he did uh, more than just uh, his Taekwondo kicks. Um, but that was really the first fight since his uh, debut in the tough finale against Chris Tickle where he was uh, used his wrestling. Um, but the losses to Adriano Martins and Jorge Masvidal where he was uh, just really badly outgrappled. Martins was able to drop him on the feet actually and then submitted him real easily on the ground. And then uh, Masvidal was just able to take him down over and over again and uh, Crookshank really had no answer. Uh, for it off of his back. And Benil Dariush uh, is a specialist on the ground. Um, 
a very uh, strong positional grappler. I was really impressed with him in his last fight against, um, uh, what's his name, Carlos Diego Ferreira. I picked him to lose that fight, but I thought it was such an impressive performance, the way he just imposed his size on him. He has a wide, thick frame and was really just able to stifle Ferreira, who um, is also uh, a good grappler and showed that in his fight against uh, Colton Smith. And before that, had a really nice submission win over Tony Martin, um, where he, was, he struggled a bit early on the feet, but was able to overcome that. Actually started doing well on the feet, and then on the ground, uh, submitted Martin with the arm triangle. And uh, submission win in his first fight against uh, Charlie Brenneman. Uh, dropped him, got a submission there. And uh, had the loss to Ramsey Nijem, where he was just uh, kind of blown through on the feet. Um, never really got a chance to get started, and uh, that loss kind of looks bad in hindsight, but did end up uh, beating the guy that uh, knocked out Ramsey Nijem and Ferreira. But um, I really think that uh, Darius is just going to be too... Uh, he's too good on the ground and, uh, you know, really good with his takedowns. I think he's going to put that size on Crookshank, and it's going to look similar, similar to the Masvidal fight. If it stays on the feet, I definitely give Crookshank a huge advantage. Um, you know, I just mentioned uh, Darius getting uh, knocked out by Ramsey Nijem uh, right at the in the opening um, minutes of that fight. Uh, Nijem just barnstormed him, and Tony Martin was also uh, having success on the feet early against uh, Darius. But uh, I'm going to go with Darius here. I think uh, if he is able to secure that takedown, it's likely that he submits Crookshank. Crookshank just hasn't uh, been rounding out his game, hasn't really been developing. He's always had that really flashy, dangerous striking, but um, I don't think that's enough to fight against, win against these um, these more well-rounded uh, fighters. So I'm going to go with uh, Darius, and uh, you know I I feel fairly confident in it. Um, you know, but of of course, uh, you know, Crookshank can win this. But I'd really suggest uh, think it over again if if you think that uh, you know Crookshank should be the big favorite here. And next up, a middleweight, Elias Theodoro versus Roger Narvaez. Um, I'm interested in seeing Theodoro again, and I think this should be uh, a fairly easy, winnable fight for him. Roger Narvaez. Um, having a very uh, kind of mediocre, unimpressive showing in his debut against Patrick Cummins. He's the only guy that Cummins has been able to finish in the UFC, and uh, the finish didn't even look particularly brutal. It just kind of looked like Narvaez had, uh, you know, just had uh, one too many punches uh, on the ground um, from Cummins on top of him. Uh, you know, wasn't knocked out or anything, and uh, the whole, I don't know. Um, but then his next fight against Luke Barnett, I uh, was able to get the win, uh, kind of a, a workman performance. It was really ugly. Um, Narvaez definitely, uh, you know, showed, uh, proved, um, it was definitely evident in that last fight that, uh, he has a, a job outside of the UFC as a fireman. I remember thinking in that, uh, Luke Barnett fight, uh, when I was watching that fight, I remember thinking to myself, man, this guy just uh, looks like uh, he's holding something back. He can't, uh, you know, he can't quite get anything done. You know, he was hitting Barnett a lot, um, but looked kind of slow, and, uh, you know, nothing was really happening. And then when he said he was a fireman after the fight, it, uh, it really um, have made things clear because uh, it's kind of evident in his fighting style. Um, but just looked slow, was able to drop Barnett in the third round with a head kick, but was so tired and so, um, you know, seemed like a novice on the ground that even after taking his back and attempting the rear naked choke, wasn't able to finish Barnett after he had just, uh, you know, knocked him down. Uh, so I think he's a low-level fighter. And Theodoro, uh, he's got great cardio. He's got good size and pushes a really hard pace. I loved his finish over Sheldon Westcott in the Tough Nations finale. Loved his ground and pound and uh, his just persistent uh, takedown attempts. And then his last fight, I was really impressed. He was able to fight Bruno Santos at his own game. Couldn't quite uh, turn up the pace like he did against Westcott, but um, was able to just out-grapple Santos. He was able to win some of those uh, 
um, positioning battles on the feet, was able to lock up the waist from behind and uh, drag him down. Um, after uh, losing a round there, uh, came out in the third round and uh, and um, you know, beat Santos at his own kind of slow, grinded out uh, game. I thought that was impressive. So uh, excited to see Theodoro. I think he's got some ability. Uh, really, that pace is a is a big asset of his. I think he's really going to pour it on Narvaez and uh, possibly get a finish here. And the last fight on the preliminary card at lightweight, Ross Pearson versus Sam Stout. A matchup that uh, I'm not really particularly excited for, um, but you know there could be a, a worse matchup. Two guys, though, who I think are just over the hill and uh, their best days are behind them. Uh, more so for Sam Stout, definitely, but Ross Pearson coming off the knockout loss to Iaquinta, I think we really saw his ceiling there. Um, but I'm taking Ross Pearson here. Uh, Sam Stout, the knockout loss to uh, KJ Noons a couple of fights ago. Actually, that was his last fight, and um, that was about a year ago. <clears throat> I thought that loss uh, was really bad. I mean, uh, uh, he had never been put out on the feet like that uh, before, at least not for a very long time. Um, actually, I don't think he was ever knocked out cold like that. But uh, Sam Stout, always known for being the, the knockout striker himself and uh, just getting his lights put out by K.J. Noons, another guy who uh, you know, seems to be at the tail end of his career. I thought that was pretty telling of uh, where he is right now. And, um, you know, had the loss to James Krause um, a couple of fights before that. And uh, his wins in the last couple of years have just all been against very irrelevant guys. Cody McKenzie, Carlos Fedor, and Spencer Fisher in his uh, last fight. And uh, a lot of people actually thought uh, Fisher won that fight. So Stout's just been uh, hanging around and meddling. Uh, I really don't think he has any worth in the UFC at this point. And um, Pearson, although he had the setback in his last fight, you know, has had a couple of... Uh, Good wins before that. The finish over Gray Maynard was nice. Got the knockout in the second round. Um, definitely got the should have gotten the win over Diego Sanchez. And a couple of finishes uh, before that against Ryan Couture and George uh, Sauteropoulos. Uh, Pearson can put his have his lights put out as well. You know, Iaquinta, Cub Swanson. But um, I just see him having the more technical, the more slick, and more defensively sound uh, boxing game. Um, and better movement uh, than Sam Stout. And I think he can get a finish as well. Moving on to the main card, though, at flyweight, Chris Carriasso versus Henry Cejudo. Um, this is the one fight on the on the pay-per-view card that you know I think could uh, would be great as the, the leading prelim fight, but uh, I'm not complaining about it because it is a, a really interesting matchup um, and a really big one for uh, Cejudo. Um, can jump uh, way up in the rankings with a win here. Um, but Chris Carr, also kind of a longtime uh, veteran, has never really had a breakout performance, uh, was at Bantamweight before dropping down to Flyweight, and um, had a couple of losses to start out at Flyweight against John Moraga, got finished by him, and then uh, got horribly out-wrestled, and lay, he got uh, he got lay and prayed by Juicier Formiga. After that, had a, a three-fight win streak. Uh, finished Iliardo Santos, although almost got knocked out himself in that fight uh, before turning things around. Uh, and then wins over Danny Martinez and Luis Smolka, where he didn't look particularly impressive. I thought the win over Smolka was a little more meaningful because uh, Smolka had some uh, hype uh, behind him coming off of uh, the win over um, Oskilich before that. But... Um, pretty methodical kickboxing um, in those two fights. Um, a, a skilled kickboxer, um, when he's given space, you know, against Smolka, Smolka could just never close the distance, even who's the, the much taller and longer fighter. Um, Cariasso was just able to beat him to the punch every time. And then Martinez was uh, pressing him up against the fence a little too much. Um, you know, he seemed slower than Martinez in that fight, but, uh, you know, did have uh, the better striking. And then against Johnson, really just got uh, ran over and um, 
I don't think he'll ever be at that level. I do think he's good enough. Uh, I, I do think it's possible he can beat uh, Cejudo on the feet. Um, I'm still really interested uh, to see Cejudo's wrestling game. We didn't get to see any of it in his debut against uh, Dustin Kimura, but he did show really good boxing and showed really good striking for a guy who uh, was an Olympic uh, wrestler. Um, you know, definitely did not look like an amateur on the feet. I mean, didn't look didn't look like a world class striker, but definitely looked like uh, a guy who had been in MMA for a while. And I was uh, really impressed by that because um, I would expect I would have expected his striking to look a lot more rudimentary. And while it was uh, a little limited, you know, not not attacking from angles and um, not getting too creative with the strikes, pretty basic. But he did have a lot of power and. Um, and hand speed uh, did uh, drop Kamora in the first round, I believe, almost finished him. And I do think that aggression um, can work against uh, Cariasso. I think Cariasso is a little more technical, um, more patient with his striking, and I think he could, uh, you know, win the striking battle at distance here. Um, but Cejudo just looks hungry. Um, looks like he's really going for it. And Cariasso being around for so long, never really having a breakout performance and never really getting a sense that he's um, you know, really getting a whole lot better. I think Cejudo, um, you know, being on the rise, I think this just might be his opportunity to kind of uh, put Cariasso away and um, you know, really surpass him uh, as this uh, younger, hung hungrier guy coming up even though he has a, a more limited skill set, um, even on the feet. But I'm going to go with Cejudo here. Cariasso just never really had a, a really dominant win. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Cejudo, but I do think this one could be close. And uh, I definitely think Cariasso uh, is more than capable of uh, winning a decision here. And next up at heavyweight, Roy Nelson versus Alistair Overeem. I just love this fight. I think it's so much fun. Um, you know, no one's uh, talking about it. It's not the the featured fight, but um, just what a fun matchup. Alistair Overeem. I he's just a guy you root for every time. You know, a guy with um, with such a decorated background in MMA and um, and kickboxing, but. Uh, just has a horrible chin and um, has had just too many mental uh, lapses to to really count on him anymore. Um, did that rebound with a nice win over Stefan Struve though, but um, the thing about that win that uh, you know is really keeping me from you know getting on the Overeem hype train. He didn't throw a punch in that fight on the feet and. Um, you know, it looks like he's just very hesitant to stand. Uh, going back to the Frank Mir fight, um, even going back to the Bigfoot Silva fight, you know, he's, he seems to really uh, put, in, put an emphasis and a focus on using his wrestling, taking guys down and um, putting his size on them. Uh, you know, the Bigfoot Silva has gassed himself out by uh, just um, getting on top and trying to pound him out. And the Travis Brown fight, I thought, was uh, the best he's looked in the UFC, uh, maybe other than his win over Struve on the feet. But then against Frank Mir, just uh, completely unwilling to stand, um, just kind of out-wrestled him in a very boring manner and uh, didn't really do much with ground and pound. And then against Ben Rothwell, just kind of stood in front of him, uh, you know, was throwing a few push kicks and, uh, and um, trying to find his distance with his strikes, but not really throwing anything big. And, uh, you know, as, as soon as Rothwell decided to throw, he connected and put him out. Um, and you saw the same thing against Stefan Struve for about a, a minute or two there. They were just uh, moving around on the feet, trying to feel each other out. And uh, I, don't, I don't think Overeem threw a single strike. I think he's, you know, very hesitant to fight on the feet to really let his hands go. I think he knows uh, by now that his chin is terrible. Um, it seems to really rely on that wrestling game. And I say that because, um, you know, Roy Nelson definitely lets his hands go, and that's where he wants the fight is on the feet and just throws nothing but haymakers and bombs. It can get sloppy. It can be inaccurate at times, um, especially when his cardio starts to go and you get into that second and third round. 
Um, I, I do feel like uh, Roy Nelson is aging. Um, definitely saw that in his last fight against Mark Hunt. You know, I'd never been put out that way before. I thought it was really, I was really surprised that uh, Nelson was knocked out. Um, so I, I say that because I think if Nelson can keep this on the feet, use movement, move around, um, you know, throw big shots at over him, I think he has a very high chance of knocking him out. Uh, within the first couple of minutes. If this gets into the second round, I think it's over for Nelson. I think his cardio um, will be depleted at that point. And uh, I think Overeem, I think it's going to help him that uh, he's uh, really focused on his wrestling in the last couple of years. I think he can uh, just put that size on Nelson and really tire him out, even just holding him against the cage, taking him down. I think he's going to have a massive size advantage. Uh, going back to the Frank Mir fight back in 2011, uh, and Frank Mir, uh, really, I think one of the worst wrestlers ever in the heavyweight division, um, was able to very easily, uh, just ankle pick, uh, Roy Nelson over and over again, not even clean takedowns, but, uh, Nelson just didn't have the cardio or the takedown defense, uh, to deal with it. And, um, that's, uh, that's uh, what I'm leaning towards is Overeem out wrestling uh, Nelson. And if he can get him on top and throw those big uh, missiles like he did against Struve, I definitely think he can put him out. Um, but he's going to have to survive that, uh, that those opening minutes of the first round where he seems very vulnerable, very kind of lost, and just kind of, um, just kind of moves around uh, in front of his opponent. Um, kind of w without direction or without purpose, just, uh, you know, stands in front of them like he did against Rothwell and um, even against Strew for uh, almost the entire first round in that fight. So uh, very interesting matchup. I just think uh, Nelson is a little bit over the hill at this point. I think his uh, his speed has declined, and I think Overham is going to be able to get that takedown before uh, Nelson can... Uh, land the fight ending shot. So I'm going to go with over him here, but uh, a real uh, close fight. And next up, Walter Wade, Johnny Hendricks versus Matt Brown. Uh, another really great matchup. Uh, a bigger opportunity for Brown can really redeem himself from that loss to Lawler, where I actually think he competed well, even though he kind of got dominated. Um, Johnny Hendricks, I thought he won uh, the last fight against Robbie Lawler. I really do. Um, you know, I'll give Lawler that fifth round, but I definitely didn't give uh, Lawler the fourth round. Um, and Hendricks, I thought, uh, was looking really good early on. I thought Lawler was looking terrible, but um, some improvements that Hendricks made, I thought uh, the way he timed his combinations and uh, his hand speed looked really good instead of just standing in front of Lawler the whole time like he did in the first fight. He really picked his moments to explode and uh, looked fresh and his takedowns were looking uh, good early on. Um, but what was most concerning about that to me was his uh, explanation uh, for his, his wilting in uh, those uh, final rounds. You know, just... Uh, just lowering his head and driving Lawler back into the fence and just falling to his knees after failing to secure the takedown and basically giving away uh, the the dominant position to Lawler, uh, I thought was just really bizarre. Um, but if he had just said after the fight that he was tired, that it was, it was a cardio problem, you know, I would have understood it. But what he said was, um, what he said was that he felt he won the fight and that, um, he said that if he had, if he thought he was down going into that fifth round, he wouldn't have done that. That he would have uh, tried to do more to to be dominant and uh, secure the round. And he said the same thing after the GSP fight. He said um, he said that he coasted in the fifth round because he felt he had the win. And I thought that was just very bizarre, especially for a guy that's um, that was uh, such a high level wrestler in college. Uh, to me, that's very weird. I think there might be some mental stuff going on there. Um, and if if Hendricks hasn't, uh, I mean, I don't know if it was a cardio problem or what. I know he's uh, he's making a big deal about uh, his weight now and how lean he is. Um, but that kind of faltering in those later rounds, uh, which he didn't do against Lawler, um, 
in the first fight, I think is very strange. And if he, if he has any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of mental error like that in this fight, Brown is definitely capable of overwhelming him. And, uh, you know, it will, I don't think it would just be Hendricks giving the fight away this time like he did to Lawler, but Matt Brown would take it from him and really, um, you know, pour it on in uh, the later rounds. But uh, a big thing to consider here uh, is the wrestling. Matt Brown, as as uh, as great as, as much as he's improved, as uh, great as he as he's looked on the feet in that seven fight win streak he had uh, before losing to Lawler. He didn't fight any wrestlers, uh, not a single one. Uh, Chris Cope, Stephen Thompson, Luis Ramos, Swick, Mian, Pyle, and Eric Silva, none of those guys are wrestlers. Um, it's going to be a very different look, one that he hasn't had um, in a very long time, and I'd say uh, the best wrestler he's ever fought in the UFC uh, by far, um, by far more decorated than anyone um, he's ever fought looking over his... Uh, UFC uh, record here. Um, I think uh, Hendricks is really going to have no problem taking down uh, Matt Brown. And on the feet, uh, I think Brown is slightly more technical. Um, you know, both are very aggressive. But if Hendricks can use that movement that he used in that Martin Campman fight, I think he's got a lot more uh, pop in his uh, punches, a lot more power, and can uh, put Brown out, um, even as tough as uh, Matt Brown is. He hasn't uh, used that kind of uh, really erratic movement since the Campman fight, you know, against Lawler, just kind of standing in front of him. And same thing against GSP, using that really, um, that phone booth uh, boxing range and uh, real in-close uh, boxing. But if he can do something like that, I wouldn't rule him out knocking out Brown on the feet. But I just think uh, Brown doesn't have any answer for the wrestling, and we're really going to see Brown get out-wrestled here. So I'm going to take Hendricks to win a decision. Next up, women's strawweight, Carla Esparza versus Joanna uh, Yen Jacek. Uh, Joanna Yen Jacek, uh, I picked her to win that fight against uh, Claudia Gadelia, but I thought God Gadelia got robbed, and uh, I'm kind of surprised that more people didn't feel that way um, after that fight. I uh, I was really impressed with Ian Jacek in her first fight against Juliana Lima. Um, seems like obviously that uh, that um, I think uh, Thai boxing or uh, what whatever uh, her background was kickboxing that background uh, is really evident in her game. Seems like a really uh, technical, uh, capable striker. Throws a high volume. But uh, Gadelia was just able to press her up against the fence. Never uh, really secured the takedown. Yen Jacek um, was doing a good job of defending it, but um, was not able to get her back off of the fence. I did give her one of the rounds. I think it was the second where she dropped her. But those other two rounds, she was just really held up against the fence and smothered and um, Really lost the positioning battle there. And Carla Esparza having the wrestling background, showing great uh, wrestling ability throughout her run on tough. And then uh, even more so, um, looking even more dominant against Nama Yunus in the finale. Uh, she seems like a very talented, uh, dominant wrestler, especially once she gets on, on top. Her ground and pound uh, against Nama Yunus was just relentless and has a great rear naked choke, which she... Uh, I think she got uh, two uh, RNC finishes in the house and then against Nama Yunus. I think she's going to have no problem uh, getting Yen Jay checked down and then uh, pouring it on with that ground and pound and uh, those submission attempts. So I, I'm going to be really shocked if this fight is competitive. If it stays on the feet, uh, Yen Jay check, I think, is definitely good enough to make it competitive, although. As far as I thought her uh, striking just looked drastically improved against Nama Yunus. And uh, another thing, I don't think people uh, give As far as enough credit for how dominant she was against Nama Yunus. I picked Nama Yunus to win that fight. And Nama Yunus uh, in uh, the tough house was just looking like a killer. Had those um, those uh, Kimura finishes from her back. Um, 
and just look very uh, deadly and uh, unorthodox on the feet, kind of like Pettis or uh, Anderson Silva. Um, just kind of like this very elusive fighter. And uh, Sparza just poured it on with a, a very simple um, boxing and wrestling attack. So I think Spars is a, a really great fighter. It's coming off of a great run and uh, a really spectacular performance to win the belt in her last fight. And I just think uh, Yen Jacek doesn't have... Uh, isn't well rounded enough to compete with Asparza. I think she's. I have a feeling she's really gonna look like a fish out of water when she uh, hits the ground. But um, got to go with Asparza here. But I do like Ian Jacek. And I do think she is uh, an elite fighter um, at straw weight, and uh, you know definitely think she ha she has a, a really bright future. But uh, I don't see her um, having much success at all against Asparza here. And then the main event, lightweight, Anthony Pettis versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, another really great fight and another guy in Dos Anjos who I think people just uh, don't give enough credit. I remember watching this guy when he fought um, when he fought Clay Guida and just thinking that uh, you know he looked like just kind of your average journeyman fighter and uh, was you know never really going to do anything significant in the sport and then um you know slowly started playing together wins but uh the last couple of years years was able uh to get the big win over Cerrone had the incredible knockout uh over Ben Henderson which wasn't I think was an early stoppage but uh, I'm not gonna you know discredit him for that he he dropped uh Ben Henderson and uh you know put his lights out for a second which is something we've never seen anyone do to Henderson before um except for Pettis with the showtime kick and then against Nate Diaz, uh, just looked great, uh, really, with his, has a very sharp, clean wrestling game, very fluid takedowns, and uh, on the feet, just has really great hand speed, and is able to uh, use those combinations to close distance very effectively, and then uh, get in on those takedowns. Um, I'm not going to rule out a Dos Anjos win here, not at all. Um, how Melendez fought him in the last fight, I thought he was just... Uh, putting together a perfect game plan. I was really surprised by how much success he had early on, you know, doing the exact same thing that Dos Anos does, uh, um, especially in his last fight against Nate Diaz. Melendez was, uh, you know, using uh, was using combinations to close the distance and get in on Pettis' legs against the fence, and I think he did secure a takedown uh, in that fight, uh, if I remember correctly, but I think Dos Anjos is, uh, might even be a more athletic wrestler than uh, Melendez is, and uh, I think he has the sharper uh, Muay Thai striking, so I definitely think he's uh, he can get uh, Pettis down a few times, maybe steal a round or two, make it close and competitive, and possibly win the decision, um, but I am going to take Pettis, you know, just because this guy is so dangerous and lethal, um, you know, after uh, I thought really struggling uh, to create space against Melendez, getting pushed up against the fence, having to defend the takedown, um, you know, all he needed was uh, one guillotine attempt, one opening, and uh, was able to put Melendez away. Um, you know, his finishes over uh, Cerrone and uh, the jiu-jitsu game, uh, he has the, the arm bar off of his back against Ben Henderson, just extremely dangerous everywhere, um, on the ground, on the feet, um, real unorthodox on the feet, um, a lot of power, uh, lightning fast, and uh, I think really one of these superstar uh, fighters and uh, just kind of one of these uh, once-in-a-generation uh, gifted athletes like Anderson Silva. I think that's how good Pettis is on the feet, but um, you know, just seeing the little uh, chink in his armor that... Uh, Melendez was able to expose last time. I definitely think uh, Dos Santos has the game where he can capitalize on that. But I will take uh, Pettis here. Uh, I think he wins a decision. I do think Dos Santos is tough enough to, to hang in there. Um, but uh, Dos Santos, I don't think, quite has the the finishing power. I do think he would need to you know, uh, win a decision here to win. Pettis, does, I, you know, Pettis could finish him. I do think... I'm taking him to win the decision, but um, you know Pettis uh, is the much more lethal fighter. And Rafael Dos Santos, before he was ever a striker, I, I was uh, saying how I remember seeing him fight Clay Guida 
Um, you know, he was a, a very average striker back then and uh, came into the sport just as a ground guy, a jiu-jitsu guy, and that's all he had. Um, you saw in the Jason High fight was able to use his uh, jiu-jitsu off his back very well to get the fight stood back up and to get back to his feet, uh, attacking with Kimura's off his back, using his uh, guard well. Um, I don't think Pettis is going to blow through this guy on the ground like he's done to Ben Henderson and Melendez. Uh, but a very competitive fight and uh, one I'm really looking forward to. But uh, we'll take Pettis. So those are my predictions for UFC 185 Pettis versus Dos Anjos. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, please like the video, comment, uh, subscribe. Um, feel free to, to argue with me on any of the picks I made. And I'll be back uh, within the next few days, hopefully, with my picks for uh, the next event. Uh, Fight Night 61, I believe, Maya versus LaFlair. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.